Greetings from Birmingham, Alabama. Welcome to the 2021 Blazer Hatchery and Hackathon. My name is Rayma Henderson. I'm an entrepreneurship major at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. And on behalf of our university, I'm honored to welcome such a large audience from viewers across the world. Entrepreneurship is my passion. I competed in the inaugural run of this program back in 2019. And let me tell you, if you love entrepreneurship like I do, you're in for an exciting event. Programs like this one instill in young learners strong resilience, the drive to, required to become an entrepreneur or become a key entre, a member of an entrepreneurial company. In my case, I've done both. Right now, I work at Landing, where I'm gaining incredible experiences uh, at one of Alabama's premier entrepreneurial companies. As an entrepreneurship student at UAB, I'm learning concepts uh, that empower me to convey a vision, build a team, raise money, take risk, uh, pivot an organization when necessary, and navigate uncertainty with confidence. Entrepreneurship, though, is not only my passion, it's a passion for all of us here at UAB, and we're excited to share that passion with you. Enjoy the program. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the second annual Blazer Hatchery and Hackathon, coming to you live from Birmingham, Alabama. I'd like to give a special welcome to our worldwide guests. We have people tuning in from India, Rama University in China, at Hua Chao University, across Europe, Ukraine, and across the USA. A special shout out to everybody at UAB, in the business school, the medical school, the president's office, and everyone else who has supported us for this event. Let me tell you a little bit about this event and what we're gonna do tonight. So this is one of our premier events in the UAB Entrepreneurship Program. It's designed to take students at UAB who are not yet entrepreneurs, but who would really like to be entrepreneurs and give them an experience that feels a lot like entrepreneurship. So we take them from the medical school and from uh, social, sociology and social sciences and psychology, um, all the different programs that you can imagine. Um, so there's great diversity in the talent you're gonna see tonight, but they're united by a passion for entrepreneurship, but they're just not yet entrepreneurs. So we give them a really intense training session for two weeks in the entrepreneurial mindset. And then our sponsors, the Alabama Power Foundation, have presented them with a challenge, an ill-defined challenge that you'll learn more about a little bit later. And then we started a hackathon where the teams work together just like entrepreneurial teams would. And they come up with innovative solutions to the grand challenge with which they've been. Tonight, you're going to five teams. They're going to be presenting the judge panel. Uh, the judge panel will have a deliberation period to ease the tension a little bit. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Everybody will enjoy that. And there will also be a viewer's choice board where the audience uh, menu survey will pop up on your screen and you'll be able to click and select the team that you thought deserved to win. And they'll be getting a special prize as well. Um, and now it's my honor to introduce our MC for tonight's program. Eunice Elliott is well known here in our state, in Alabama, around the region, and across the country. She is a TV personality, she's an author, she's a comedian. She was our MC when we had this event for the first time um, in 2019, and she is phenomenal. She brings a lot of energy, she's an entrepreneur herself, and what she's going to do is carry us through the five team pitches. And so wherever you are in the world watching right now, please give a warm welcome. And everybody here in the room, please give a very warm welcome to Miss Eunice Elliott. Thank you and enjoy the program. Thank you so much, Dr. Murphy, for having me back. I did get a chance to uh, participate in this wonderful event in 2019, and I remember Rima, and I'm so excited to see how much more she has blossomed. She was a rock star back then already. Now, as Dr. Murphy mentioned, I am an entrepreneur myself. It depends on the day. Some days I wake up and I feel like an entrepreneur. Other days I wake up and I feel unemployed. So. Uh, today, I feel pretty successful because I'm here with a lot of great young minds, and I'm excited to present them to you this evening. There is a wonderful nervous energy and excitement, and even though they may not be officially entrepreneurs right now, they are competing for real-life cash money. So make sure you send wonderful energy and vibes to our teams as they come up and present this evening before our panel of judges. So are the teams ready? Yeah. Okay. 
I'll take that as a yes, they don't have a choice. All right, team number one, Steel City Harvesters, an urban farm serving historically excluded communities. Take it away. Yeah. Hi, well, hi. my name is Lane Lambert and I'm here with Steel City Harvest, Birmingham's newest social enterprise. Steel City Harvest is focusing on the lasting impacts of white flight in the city of Birmingham. Birmingham lost just under 50% of its population during the civil rights movement. This left thousands of vacant lots in the city. The supermarkets left with the people following the wealth out of the city. Nowadays, 70% of Birmingham is located inside of a food desert. While many people see this as a tragedy, we see it as an opportunity for change in the city. I'm with Chief Harvester Brian, and here, and what is the opportunities for change in the city of Birmingham? While many see these vacant lots as empty, we see them as full of opportunities to not only change the perceptions of our neighborhoods, but to also plant the crop of the future. We've seen it be done successfully in other communities across this nation where inspired social entrepreneurs take vacant lots in their communities and transform them into community gardens. And we believe we can do the same thing here as we believe we also have the support of the community because about an hour to two hours ago, we were over in Ensley polling our constituents, asking them their thoughts on community gardens. And we received overwhelming support for the idea and how they believed it would create a positive impact for their communities. And so what we will do is we transform these vacant lots into outdoor hydroponic gardens that, by the way, produce 30% more produce while using 90% less water than traditional farming techniques. This allows us to sell our produce at local farmers markets and local farm to table restaurants. And we believe these farm to table restaurants will be very supportive of our business because it's a unique, one of a kind farm located in the inner city limits as opposed to traditional competitors located dozens of miles away out of the city. And a part of our business is to partner with Birmingham City Schools to educate at risk high school students on the social entrepreneurship aspects of urban farming. And we even take a select few of these extremely passionate students and make them employees of Steel City Harvest to let them really go full force with their passion of urban farming. Thank you, Brian. So can you clarify for me, what makes you a social enterprise versus a more traditional business? Well, we do have our commercial side of the business, which is the selling to local farmers markets and the local farm to table restaurants. We also have a part of our business model that is strongly tied to our mission. And part of the mission is, you know, eradicating food deserts. And the way we do this is we sell our produce at below market rates to community members located in these food deserts. Thank you. So just so I have it clear, Still City Harvest wants to go into these communities with vacant lots and start hydroponic farming in them. Then they want to use local high school students to run the farms and teach them values of entrepreneurship. And then they're going to sell this back to the community at cost and to markets such as Pepper Place and local farm to table restaurants to generate a profit. You hit it on the nail, Layton. Good job. Okay, so Chief Harvester Reed, how do you plan to change the perception of Inslee as a whole in communities like it? Well, imagine driving through Inslee today and right now you see a beautiful house that's well maintained, but right beside it is a vacant lot that has been overgrown, that's been abandoned for years. What we're doing is we're buying that vacant lot at discount rates through an already established program of Birmingham, Adopt-A-Lot, and we're gonna be revitalizing it into a beautiful garden that will inspire others to go out and create their own garden. And so that's how we're gonna be changing the perception of Inslee. Well, that sounds beautiful, Brian. Now, what is your impact? So your total impact of Birmingham and the community as a whole and outside the city? Well, we don't want to limit ourselves to just Ensley. We want to grow and to eradicate food deserts all across Birmingham since 70% 70 70 of Birmingham is currently in a food desert. And so our goal is to eradicate food deserts in Birmingham and beyond. And we're going to be doing this by expanding our business into other vacant lots and, under, and other underserved communities across Birmingham. And not only that, but through training these local high school students, they'll be, when they graduate, they can go out and start their own urban farm. And so we're going to be expanding our mission to wherever they may go. They may go to other countries and they can create their own urban 
urban farm there. And so we're expanding our mission beyond Birmingham, and we want to be a forge for good in Birmingham and beyond. Great job, wonderful concept, historical uh, background, and if that young man does not have a future in urban farming, I can see him on 60 Minutes. Great interviewing, great job. It's like he already knew the answers, almost. <laughs> All right, we're ready for it. Well, let me check, is team number two ready? Okay, team number two is ready. We are now going to hear a presentation from Genesis Birmingham. This is an after-school program that instills curiosity and purpose in youth to bring generational change to the city of Birmingham. Take it away. I'm Drew, and I researched how we would collaborate with the local schools and developed our website, genesisbirmingham.org. Good evening. My name is Brittany. I did the research on the historical background of the city of Birmingham, and I also took the lead on the mission statement. Hello, everyone. My name is Nathan. I was in charge of researching financial logistics, and I also did the graphic designs. I'm Dulce, and I researched the operational logistics for Genesis. Hi, my name is Sarah. I was the team lead of Genesis Birmingham, and I was responsible for developing the curriculum and for researching partners. Be honest. Do you think of the Pythagorean theorem when you're filing your taxes? One in two high school graduates say that the, the educational system did not equip them with real life skills. And one in three people live in poverty in Birmingham. The lack of practical education and the cycle of poverty are rooted in the unequal distribution of resources due to the generational effects of redlining and segregation. So how can we revitalize Birmingham's educational system to create a cycle of wealth for the, for the youth of Birmingham? And we, we will take the youth and then we will um, have, have curiosity, autonomy, and purpose. We will achieve this empowerment through our progressive uh, approach to education. Uh, I'll now take you through our elementary curriculum in order for you to gain a more holistic view of our program. So it starts at three. Uh, we bring students from the surrounding schools to our facility where they'll socialize and they'll share a meal from local farmers. They'll be able to, to study and understand this meal more. Um, and then whenever we move into our activities, we'll have three, may, uh, six major uh, categories. So this could be like financial literacy or environmental stewardship or even home ec. Um, however, we don't, we don't expect our students to, uh, to want to learn how to you know, uh, file taxes or write a check yet. So we, we lay a framework for this so they can develop related skills uh, that are more appropriate for their age. Um, and then uh, we, we, we create a foundation based on curiosity and creativity and and determination for these students using the Montessori method. Uh, this is, uh, you know, we, you, we use a lot of um, independently guided activities and collaborative play and also um, hands-on learning. So for instance, if a student wanted to learn how to, uh, you know, build circuitry, we could uh, work with them to play with LED lights and a breadboard. Or if they wanted to learn about the environment that they could you know, build a, a, eat an ecosystem in a small little Coke bottle. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, we have fun physical activities that could combat the, the lacking and reducing recess time during traditional school hours. Uh, because at Genesis, we truly care about the social and the emotional and the physical health of our kids. Thank you. Our facility will be located in Southern Birmingham to be in close proximity to institution that will be serving. Our workforce, work, our workforce will consist of volunteers, interns with an interest in child development, and employees that will come together to cultivate an engaging experience for these students. The, the students that are benefiting from our program are welcome back to be a part of the experience for other students as well. To alleviate the stress of carpooling, Genesis will provide transportation for the students to our facility that will be equipped with a space for learning. So how do we take our program and make a viable venture out of it? Well, the demand for after-school programs in Alabama is extremely high. For every spot in a program, there are four students waiting to take their spot in line. So what will it cost? Our overhead costs include the facility maintenance, the essential staff salary, and the food. This is coupled with the initial startup cost of the facility and the educational equipment. 
So how do we cover that? Our revenue will initially be um, raised through investments and grants. Birmingham offer, offers the Bold Grant, which is a grant specifically for small businesses who innovate in education and childcare and covers up to 80% of the project cost. The remaining 20% will be sought from investors here in Birmingham who align with our mission. Long-term profits come from monthly uh, fees competitively priced, as well as uh, potential partnerships with the city of Birmingham and individual schools. So, of course, to get this program off the ground, we want to partner with local organizations who align with their mission, as well as have the infrastructure to support it. So we've already gotten in contact with Booker T. Washington Elementary and Jones Valley Elementary, who've already expressed in interest in partnership. Additionally, Altec, a resource, um, an organization based on trade, is interested in investment and partnership. And additionally, we want to be able to measure our impact in the Birmingham community. To that end, qual qualitatively, we want to work with people and get their feedback and testimonial as a social enterprise is measured by its impact on people. Quantitatively, we want to measure kids' journey through Genesis and beyond by measuring key metrics such as graduation rate, career choice, and eventually middle class growth in Birmingham. In conclusion, Genesis Birmingham is a visionary program designed to instill curiosity, autonomy, and purpose in today's youth. And of course, it's our duty to make sure that the Birmingham's youth of today have the tools they need to succeed tomorrow. Thank you. Another wonderful presentation from Genesis Birmingham. Congratulations on that. Uh, when she said, you don't think of the Pythagorean theorem when I'm doing my taxes, if you become an entrepreneur, it's pretty much the same thing. A lot of 1099s to figure that thing out. All right, is team number three ready? All right, bringing to the stage Steal the Magic City, an application platform that enables community members to experience Birmingham's rich history in a positive way. It's a YouTube. Second one. Has anyone ever stopped to consider what makes Birmingham so special? Hello, everyone. My name is Krishna Patel, team leader of Steal the Magic City. We started with an emerging problem. How do we educate the community while engaging the community on what makes Birmingham so special? So that's when we came up with Steal the Magic City. Steal the Magic City is an application platform that allows users to engage in Birmingham's rich history in a positive way. So here's how it works. QR codes are placed all throughout the city in Birmingham's most historic sites. Users then set off to find those codes. After finding and scanning those codes, users can then redeem them for prizes. For example, let's say I find two codes. I can then redeem those two codes at one of our sponsors at Thurges Barbershop, or I can save up to 10 codes to get $25 worth of gas and from our sponsors at Dotson Oil. And here's what three of the clues from one of our no most notable sites look like at Kelly Ingram Park. Clue number one, at the age of 10, Ron Buford, now top executive at Alabama Power, hid behind trees in this park to avoid high pressure hoses. And clue number two would lead the player to the exact placement within the park. So, for example, clue number two, the view from the code. Are you afraid of Jill? This is to highlight the significance of the monument. Clue number three would lead the player to the exact placement of the QR code. There are three clues per QR code per location, and they change every month to actively engage users. Well, it's only been three months since I moved here across the ocean. Well, I'm Jewa Wickle. Uh, as my friend Krishna shared about what exactly the app is, so I'm moving forward towards explaining the name, why we select this name, Steal the Magic City. As me being an international student from India, which is a very cultural country, I was super excited in exploring Birmingham's rich history and culture. As we got to know more about it, as, we, uh, as Birmingham City has been known as the Iron City of the United States because it has the biggest and oldest iron industry. 
which was the major reason of us selecting this name. Our main motivation of uh, launching and designing this app is to connect the community with the local businesses and uh, the historic places, which is the heart and soul of the city. Well, I know she is thinking like, how does this exactly help the local businesses? But it's like, as you shared, all the challenges are incorporated in such a way that people uh, collect the QR codes, complete the challenges, collect the points, and they can read them it, uh, with, uh, with our partnered local businesses in the form of freebies and discount codes. And guess what? We have already got 26 local businesses backing us as sponsors and who are even ready to write us the checks on the spot. And plus, who are, and we are already attracting international sponsors from India too, who are ready to invest in our app. And that's how we know we are moving in the right direction. Well, hello everyone. My name is Victor Boyd. And I think Steal the Magic City will be a great addition to Birmingham's cultural and uh, and entertainment industries. Our goal is to engage the community by creating a game that brings people together, supports small businesses, and showcases the incredible culture of Birmingham. Now, the community's lack of uh, knowledge of the history of Birmingham is what brought forth the idea of Steal the Magic City. And our mission to present the legacy of Birmingham will continue to evolve as we later incorporate more historical sites into our game. Our operation is essential and influential as we promote family engagement and create a more educated community. Hello everyone, my name is Shantise, the team's creative visionary. I am excited for the future of our social enterprise because we will introduce a range of initiatives that will both impact the community and transform Birmingham's uh, negative perspective in a positive way to remind our community that we are still the magic city. Wonderful, wonderful job from Steal the Magic City. I was sitting there, how many different ways can you say steal? The Magic City. Steal the Magic City. Don't steal the Magic City. All right. Great job. Congrats. All right. Team number four, are you ready? Okay. They're quiet, but they're ready. Team number four is Iron City Experiences, an application platform that uses current attractions to showcase history and deliver immersive experiences that transform how community members see. Giving the stage over to Iron City Experiences. Good evening. My name is Whitney Walker and I'm the marketing director for Iron City Experiences. Birmingham is plagued with an image that it hasn't changed since the civil rights era. The belief that Birmingham hasn't changed mixed with bad news reinforces the idea that Birmingham can't change. We took a survey with a sample size of 150 participants and we found that 58% of people had a negative perception of Birmingham. Our image is that our city is not safe, lacks attractions, and are not tolerant of diversity. Our mission is to inspire the belief that Birmingham has changed, is open to change, and can be a leader in social progress. We spoke with multiple businesses who are interested in partnering with us and they believe in our mission. I would now like to discuss with you our opportunities and resources. There are 146 properties and districts listed on the National Register in Birmingham, including three National Historic Landmarks. Visitors spent an estimated $1.9 billion in the greater Birmingham area in 2017. We have created an app which is designed to change the perception on how our users view Birmingham. By using our current attractions to showcase our history, we, we believe that we will make a lasting impact on how our users view Birmingham. We took a business impact assessment, which evaluated our social impact along with multiple key dimensions, and we were found to be certified to be eligible to be a B Corp.
My name is Trace Martin, Data Analyst for IronCA Experiences. Our app will provide a platform for users to explore all that Birmingham has to offer. Based on interest and interaction with our app, users build routes to explore Birmingham in a new way. For example, if you wanted to visit 16th Street Baptist Church, you would locate it on the map and then add it to your route. Once you add it to your route, you can begin adding more things to it. Like if you wanted to finish off the night with a nice meal at El Barrio, you will then add that to your route. Once you finish your route guide, you will hit start route and begin your journey. After a user has visited the site, they will be prompted to take a survey. This is how we track the effectiveness of our platform in changing the perception of Birmingham. My name is John Wise and I'm the director of Iron City Experiences. We believe that as our customers learn about Birmingham's history, they should be rewarded. As our users explore Birmingham's historic landmarks, they earn a cryptocurrency called Iron City Cash, which they can then use in exchange for goods and services at local businesses. A business can then use Iron City Cash as a sales tax credit. The local government is incentivized to allow the sales tax credit by a measurable improvement in Birmingham's perception, an increase in tourism, and an increase in business sales. Our revenue stream is generated by businesses paying us 20% of what they save in sales tax. For example, if a business earns $1,000 in Iron City cash, they pay us $200 and are then able to save $800 that they would have had to pay in sales tax. We believe that Birmingham's history is a source of power which can change the minds of generations. But we do not believe that the work is done yet, so we are looking to broaden our constituency in order to bring our app to market. We invite you to come alongside of us, join our mission in changing Birmingham's future. Come experience Birmingham with us. Great job, Iron City Experiences. I got the wardrobe memo, but not the t-shirt. So somebody get me my t-shirt. All right, we are down to our final team. Is team number five ready? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, this is RE Forum, an innovative e-waste recycling venture that offers previously incarcerated individuals employment opportunities and a professional boot camp training program. Take it away, RE Forum. Hello everyone, my name is Neha Mulchandani. It's been a privilege to be a team leader of this amazing and brilliant group of individuals right behind me. We're honored to have an MBHS student with us, Woody Phipps. Um, my, I'm a computer science undergraduate major and my passions lie in cybersecurity, FinTech and cloud computing. Hi, I'm Woody Phipps. I go to Mount Brook High School and I plan to go to Auburn next year to study in building science. Hi, my name is Corey Walker. I'm a digital marketing student, passionate about all things marketing and tech. Hi, my name is Julia Otto. I'm a business major and I aspire to be an entrepreneur. My name is Des Biddle and I'm an undergrad computer science student. Before we begin, I would like to share with you a very personal story that revolves around the reason that we have decided to continue with this venture. My aunt recently passed away in 2020 after being incarcerated on and off over 20 years. In that time, she lacked the available resources, community support, and employment opportunities to succeed. However, within this, there is so much reason and so much necessity for change, and we can provide that today. Here in Alabama, one out of three released prisoners reoffend within three years. This pattern is known as recidivism. The Alabama Department of Corrections stated that lack of employment options and community support for released convicts is a major factor of recidivism. However, there is opportunity for change. Birmingham recently hit the charts as the second fastest developing tech hub, but with innovation comes many things left behind, such as discarded electronic products called e-waste. Each individual in the US generates about 46 pounds of e-waste and only six pounds are being recycled. 
e waste is harmful to our environment as lead and mercury leach into our land and water. And at this point, you're probably wondering how the prison system and e waste are related. That's where reform comes in R for reducing recidivism rates, E by providing employment within our e waste facility, and reform as we reform employment opportunities. Reform success is measured by our triple bottom line, people, planet, and profit. We are putting people first by employing them at our state-of-the-art facility that is R2 Safe Recycling Certified. Second, planet. We will take this e-waste, transforming the pollution problem within Birmingham and using the e-waste to our own advantage. Finally comes profit. Our facility will tap into discarded, disintegrated tech, transforming it into hard cash, taking advantage of a $7.5 billion domestic market. This is an industry that can only grow from here as tech becomes more and more outdated quicker and quicker through new innovation within Birmingham. However, our corporate goal remains the same to make sure that recycling is accessible to everybody within the community. And we are going to do this by placing drop-off bins all around the city in high traffic areas like your coffee shop, your grocery store, and your outlet mall. Every piece of e-waste recycled within our facility is going to make sure that Birmingham stays cleaner as a city. Putting people first. Reform is focused on creating endless uh, opportunities for previously incarcerated individuals, also known as PIIs. We recognize this is a valuable demographic, as over 95% of these individuals will eventually be released with nowhere to turn, from family to income to career. To combat this, not only are we providing them opportunities within our e-waste facility, but we've created a boot camp program that focuses on a variety of courses from artificial intelligence, data analytics, and cybersecurity. Together, we believe that we can make a difference. Innovate Birmingham, a local company based off of Birmingham, believes that our implementation would be a game changer, providing education and employment opportunities are in one. We hope to partner with them as a part of our mission. We plan to lower recidivism by providing secure employment along with offering courses teaching highly desirable tech skills. But we cannot do this without first starting out as an LLC to provide a proof of concept for our e-waste facility. Now, once sustainable profitability is reached, we will then reach out to Birmingham's Offender Alumni Association to hire PIIs. From there, we will apply for our B Corp status, honoring our triple bottom line, people, planet, and profit. We utilize these three P's. We utilize these three P's to, um, to really, sorry. Okay, so we utilize th these three P's um, by placing our, uh, we utilize these three P's to balance social enterprise and profitability. By placing our employee PIIs at the forefront of our B Corp, we're able to give them, to equip them with uh, relevant tech skills, we're able to um, give them a positive, a way to positively impact their community, as well as, um, you know, a way to really contribute to the uh, much needed tech talent in Birmingham. Um, on top of that, we've created an e-waste facility that will be a, that will serve as a positive force within the environment, keeping billions of dollars worth of e-waste out of our environment every year. In our implementation, we take this e-waste, we process it, and we get, we we uh, sell all the valuable parts for profit. Uh, reform has all the resources in place. We have all the talent and we have the city for it. We can make this a success with you and the audience. With that, I think that it is so important that we continue to have this conversation about how we can tap into Birmingham's rich history as an innovative steel manufacturer and, and our potential as a tech powerhouse in the southeastern region. Um, with that, Reform would like to thank you for your time and consideration. Uh, thank you, everyone. Great job, RE Forum. Uh, I'm always excited to be a part of this event because it's exciting to see these young minds collaborate and come up with these amazing ideas that are so viable. Uh, the young man is in high school on that team, so he might 
I'm just telling you, you might think he wants to get into entrepreneurship, but he has that politician hand down already. Did you know that he has the... He had this one going, so he might have a career in office. So I want to congratulate all five teams again. Give it up for Steel City Harvesters. Genesis Birmingham. Steel the Magic City. Iron City Experiences. And RE Form. Great job. Great job to all of you. So now it's my honor and privilege to bring back the reason I'm here, Dr. Murphy. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that. We have a lot of people viewing online. That was fantastic. Uh, the judges were taking notes. Um, they're about to go into uh, their deliberation, and you, the viewers, are about to have a survey pop up on your screen where you can vote for the ones that you thought were the best. I'd like to introduce somebody now who's uh, very special. Um, so I've lived in Birmingham for three years, and we've built an amazing entrepreneurship program at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. We're one of very few schools in the country and in the state who have an entrepreneurship undergraduate major. It's only 15 months old, and it's, we're approaching 100 students, 100 declared majors. The growth has been meteoric. And I think the passion that you saw in these young aspiring entrepreneurs tonight is we're on the cusp of a sea change. Uh, there's a lot of um, entrepreneurial energy in the incoming generation right now, and we're building a program to teach them, to give them the tools that they need to build careers that make an impact and make good lives for them and their families. It's very important to us, and we couldn't do it without the support of community partners. And the gentleman uh, I'm gonna introduce to you right now was with us from the very start. He's been with us for three years. He is assistant treasurer at Alabama Power, which is our major public utility, our electric company here. And he also works with the Alabama Power Foundation, who are the generous sponsors of this event tonight. And they came up with the theme that we used, which is all about Birmingham and benefit corporations. It's very meaningful to them. It's very meaningful to our younger generation. And they're supporting us with their um, financial resources, their expertise, their network, and um, as I say, we couldn't do it without them. So I'm gonna let Chris Blake come up and tell you a little bit about their, their vision, their mission, and their purpose, and then he's on the judging panel too, so then they're gonna go deliberate and he'll introduce our special guest. But Chris, please. All right, uh, good evening everyone. Uh, Glad to be here. Thanks, Patrick, for the uh, the generous introduction. As a as a UAB alumni, I'm always excited to uh, participate in this event. And, and as the foundation, uh, we are excited to to sponsor this event. You know, the foundation's been around since 1989, and and we've been uh, ha we've had the ability to give more than 250 million dollars back to the communities here in in the state of Alabama. So we're very excited about that. And we hope that uh, through all that, that the foundation has been a force for good in the communities that we participate in, you know, providing uh, uh, grants to educational opportunities, uh, to the arts, uh, to the environmental opportunities, um, as well as to, to health and human services. And recently, we've really started to change our focus and, and be more strategic and focused on impact investing. Uh, providing low-cost loans to certain organizations to further nonprofit uh, purposes. We've also tried to get into a collaborative impact, so connecting nonprofits with uh, agencies and other resources around to help them uh, do their missions even better than they were before. And also trying to, hopefully, a lot of this will end up in economic empowerment. And we've really focused in, uh, you know, on social and societal issues this year, especially B Corps, uh, which has been part of the focus here. And so it's been really exciting to see a lot of these uh, come to fruition here tonight and, and to hear these groups. And so we definitely have our work uh, cut out for us as judges to figure out uh, our winners. And, you know, so we're going to have to get busy on that. So. Uh, without any further ado, I want to uh, bring up our entertainment for the evening as we go do our collaboration. Uh, so we have a comedian here for us, uh, Carlos Rodriguez. Uh, he is a regular in Atlanta at the Punchline, and hopefully he will be able to entertain you while we go do some work. So without further ado, Carlos, come on up. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much. Um, I just want to say it was very impressive to seeing uh, young folks like yourself uh, had that kind of confidence. 
and try to make changes, positive changes in the world. So if you can, just give these young people another round of applause, please. That was very impressive. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't have been able to do that when I was, uh, when I was that age. I, uh, I was in the Navy. I was in the Navy for a while. I, uh, I was a dental tech. I, I'm a, this is way more fun than my day job. I guess I should just, I, I'm a dental hygienist, nine to five. That's, that's what I do. And silence and disbelief. That is the proper response. <laughs> I know I look like security at Walmart. I know what I look like. I, uh, um, somebody told me I look like if, uh, if Vin Diesel and Pitbull had a love child and, um, and overfed him. And I'm like, wow, that is, that's incredible. And it's incredible. I, I don't know. I just, Walmart, it's one of those places where I think, I think they want you to steal. Um, <laughs> they put the oldest guy at the door and I'm not very fast anymore, but I can outrun Earl. You know, if, if I make it to the car, it's my stuff. That's, that's a little game I like to play with the, uh, with the folks at, at Walmart. And, um, this is, this is kind of weird for me, guys. This is, uh, it's kind of like an audience, but not really, you know? <laughs> I really am hygienic if anybody cares. I know I don't look like one. And uh, I had a lady come in the other day. She's like, where's, where's my regular girl? And I'm like, I, I don't know. She's on vacation. You got Carlos, the hygienist today, which I get it. It doesn't sound legit to me either, but I got a name tag and scrubs that kind of sort of fit. So open wide. <laughs> Let's, let's, let's just get uncomfortable. And I go, what's, what's the problem? She's like, I've never seen a male hygienist before. I'm like, that's because you're mispronouncing it, ma'am. And then she goes, listen, I got to know. And this, this is where things go. She goes, uh, you're, not, you're not homosexual, right? I go, wow, that's incredibly rude. It has nothing to do with anything. And, and no, I'm not. For the record, I'm not. My husband is. But, but I'm not. I don't know. I almost didn't make it tonight, guys. I got a little fender bender. I had to get a rental car at Enterprise. Anybody ever rent a car with Enterprise? It's a, it's a horrible organization. And this is just my experience. Every time I go, they lose my reservation. I'm like, and it happened again. I'm like, how does this keep happening? She's like, I don't know, sir, but we're going to make it up to you. We're going to get you a free upgrade to an SUV. What do you think? And I'm like, no. Drive all over the southeast. You're going to kill me in gas. And she goes, it's a small one. You're going to love it. It's a Hyundai Tucson. Tucson, really? You mean Tucson? She goes, Tucson? Is that how you say it? I'm like, yeah. She goes, what's a Tucson? I'm like, are you kidding me? It's a city in Arizona. It's right next to Phonix. <laughs> which you need to get hooked on, evidently. I'm like, hurry up. Give me the keys to the Tucson. I got to go to Knoxville tomorrow night. She goes, it was Phonix, and I wasn't. You guys are smarter than this, guys. Come on. Guys worried about winning. I get it, man. I'm a I try to be a winner too. Not very successfully, but I try <laughs> I try. I uh, <laughs> um I'm married. Sorry. <laughs> I was completely safe here, just for the record. I was completely safe. Uh, 31 years, guys. I'm serving life. Thank you. I uh thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was 20. When we got married, 20, what do you know at 20? Nothing. You don't know how about, sir, you, is that your missus? How, how long have you guys been? 22. 22. So you, that's a great answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite color? What's, you, know, you better have all that information ready to go, sir. Don't, don't mess around. And yeah, but we've been married a long time. My wife, like 31 years is a long time and uh, have a couple adult children. I, uh, I have a son uh, who's 25, and uh, my daughter's 29. She's a, phys a physician. She's a doctor. You know, my son is not. Might be going to prison, but still, you know, it's just, there's a program that'll help him when he gets out. That's, you know, no, I'm, I'm kidding. He's not, he's not that bad. He's just a boy. He's not as focused as his sister, and, uh, you know, it is what it is, guys. It is what it is. But, you know, 31 years, it's a long time. The other day, we're driving home from dinner, and I'm always clowning around. I never stop, right? It must have just rained. The road is real foggy. And I go, what if we hit something and we think it's a deer, but it's not? It turns out it's a unicorn. She goes, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Don't talk to me. And I'm like, just hear me out. 
Unicorns are magical. You can't kill it. I would just drag him to the side of the road. He'd be so grateful. He'd grant us two wishes. What would you do with your wish? She goes, I wish I had a husband that didn't believe in unicorns. That's what I wish. And I giggle all the way home like an idiot because she's upset over an accident that didn't happen on a thing that doesn't exist. It's a non-issue. She's a hater, bro. She doesn't like the, the stand-up. She doesn't. Like I bought a dream catcher and I put it over my side of the bed. And she cut all the strings out. That is. That's just negativity right there. That's. <laughs> love to death. I'm not going anywhere because. Let's be honest. I don't have options. Right? This, is, this is what commitment looks like, ladies. This is. This is coming home at 7 o'clock every night. <laughs> I, um, now she's a nurse. She works nights. I think she's a nurse. I'm not really sure where she goes. It's none of my business, really. I, uh, I don't ask too many questions, you know. you know. She's been doing this lately. I don't know, long-term relationships. You guys are probably focused on school and making it big and that type of thing. I, I get it. Take your time. Don't, don't rush, you know. But I, got, I was 20, like I said. This is probably not the smartest thing I ever did. But it worked out, you know, 31 years. And I um, lost my track of thought. I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, she's an animal lover, guys. She's got, we have a bunch of pets at our house. Pets? Pet lovers? Yeah. Yeah, who isn't, right? So if you're not, something might be wrong with you, you know? We got a, she has a pet rat, you know, which is kind of weird, right? She walks around with it on her shoulder. She's like, hey, what do you think? I'm like, no, it's just, just, just creepy. I go, if you're not in the mood, just say so. That is. <laughs> Wrong demographic. I forgot who I was talking to. I, you got it, right? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I, we, got, uh, we have a sugar glider. Sugar glider, which sounds like, like lotion for diabetics, but it's not. It's a little flying squirrel. <laughs> And he's horrible at flying, like he hits the back of the couch. And I'm like, Lance, dude, I, you know, but contacts cost too much. They're, I, we're not, you just, we took his pilot's license and uh, not let him fly anymore. We have three dogs, Cocoa Butter and Snickers. Almost like a heavy person named them, huh? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Snickers is a, uh, and they're all rescues. I, rescue's a strong word. I didn't rescue them from anything. I just... You know, got them free on Friday at the pound. I just, you know, and, um, but Snickers is, uh, she's a chihuahua mixed with a um, basset hound. It's kind of crazy, right? Butter is a, uh, a miniature pincher, and, uh, and Coco is uh, a serial killer, I think. I think she's, uh, she's a big old rough looking dog, man. And uh, we had uh, two guinea pigs, too, had in the past tense. A couple weeks ago, my wife comes up to me. She goes, listen, um, Peanut's losing weight. We had two of them, Peanut and Pumpkin, right? She goes, uh, Peanut's losing weight. And I'm like, how do, you, how do you know he's losing weight? She's like, he feels a little skinny. He feels a little, a little bony. I'm like, okay. And I go, what, what do you want to do? She goes, I want to take him to a vet. I'm like, there's a vet for guinea pigs? She's like, yeah. I go, that sounds like a specialist. How much is this going to cost? And she goes, it's 75 bucks for the exam. I go, and you guinea pigs, 30. It's two and a half guinea pigs, am I right? Yeah. I go, why don't you just turn around and I'll do what we need to do and I'll run out to PetSmart. I'll bring you a brand new baby bear. You call him Walnut. I don't care. She goes, we're not doing that. We're taking him in. So my son takes him in and I go, what's the damage? He goes, dude, you're not going to like it. Uh, it's, it's about 400 bucks. I'm like, for what? Go, his teeth got too long from eating soft foods. They're going to sedate him and shave his teeth down. I'm like, he's getting Invisalign? What are you talking about? I go, you know, you know your boy's a hygienist, right? To grab the Tito's and the toenail clippers and let's work a little frontier medicine on the kitchen table, dude, you know? We're not doing that. We're taking him in. So all weekend, I got to feed him guinea pig protein powder smoothie nonsense mix because he can't chew. You know, Tuesday morning rolls around. My son takes him in. I don't hear anything. I call him around lunchtime. I'm like, dude, how's peanut? And he goes, shh, he's in recovery. He's in recovery. It's not grandpa with a heart valve. It's a, it's a fancy tailless rat. I'm a Puerto Rican dude from New Jersey. We didn't have pet rodents growing up. I mean, they were there freelancing. 
but they didn't clock in, you know? Unbelievable, man. I'm like, whatever. So I get home. We have like a corral. And there's two little huts and pumpkins in one. He comes out. He comes strutting out. He's all fat and juicy and orange, right? Like a wrestler from the 80s. You know what I'm talking about? And then Peanut comes out. And he looked pathetic, dude. They, his head was bandaged up like a Civil War soldier. They made, a, they made him a splint out of popsicle sticks. He was limping a little bit. They shaved him from the neck down. He's all pink and veiny. I was like, oh, my God. But you okay, man? Are you cold? What's cut a sock when, and I made him a little jacket. I was like, how was that, Peanut? He was like, it, it was horrible, Dad. It was, it was horrible. I was like, I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. We fist bump. I let him go to sleep. I go to bed. I go to check out him the next morning before I leave to work. He didn't make it through the night, guys. I know. No one's more upset than me. Than me. 400 bucks. Right? <laughs> 400 bucks, guys. Four bills. That's ridiculous, man. What kind of hustle are they running here? That's, that's 13 guinea pigs. Before tax, am I right? It's a lifetime worth of guinea pig ownership, folks. First real money I make off this comedy game. I'm going out and buying a baker's dozen worth of guinea pigs and training them in, a, in an intensive boot camp to break into this lady's vet's office and bite her in the ankles. That's what we're going to do. Rest in peace, Peanut. Rest in peace. Wow, it's quiet in here, guys. It's, it is, I'm bombing so hard right now. I'm going to get a visit from the FBI when this is over. This is, you know what's funny? I, I just recorded a, a comedy special two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, joke's on me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, my gosh. Did I tell you about the, the car accident, the Tucson? Did we talk about that? I, um, I'll say this, man. 2020 was a rough year. Transitional in, in many, transformative in a lot of ways. Am I right? Um, you know, we lost some people. Things were tough. I, uh, you know, it, it wasn't horrible for everybody. I mean, as a bigger guy, if it took a pandemic for me to get a little bit of extra elbow room on a flight, I'm going to roll that dice every time. Come on, guys. we just jokes. Relax. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I've changed my perspective. 2019, Father's Day, it's a Saturday night. Father's Day Sunday, of course, but the Saturday night before. I'm performing at a theater in Lawrenceville, Georgia, having a great time. I was murdering. I was murdering and dying at the same time, guys. I, I broke out in a cold sweat, heavy, suspicious amount, like, like R. Kelly standing outside of a high school, like a guilty amount of sweat, you know? I... <laughs> A guilty amount of sweat. And uh, turns out I was in the beginning stages of having a heart attack on stage, guys. True story. I was in such denial, such denial, that I, I leave the show after I finish the show like a lunatic. Because I'm a monkey. I got to perform. You know what I mean? And uh, I'm on the way home. I'm driving. I stop for gas like a lunatic. And uh, I text my son. And I go, dude, do you want to go get wings when I get home? That's how much I was lying to myself. I was feeling a pain I've never felt before. I'm pretty sure I knew what it was, but I wasn't sure. And I figured I could just ride it out, you know? I get home and I tell my wife, who's a nurse, we think, right? I go, <laughs> I go, babe, I think I'm having a heart attack. And she's like, well, you're probably just dehydrated. It's been hot today. Why don't you just sit down? Let me watch it for a minute. I couldn't sit still. I'm pacing around the house. Next thing you know, I'm kneeling on the floor, my chest and the cushions of the couch, and I'm moaning. She goes, oh, man, this, is, this looks serious. And she calls my son. He goes, come down here. Plan A. I go, plan A? He comes downstairs with a box, and in the box is a little bottle of nitroglycerin tablets. I'm like, you had nitroglycerin tablets on standby? Mm -hmm. She goes, look at your big behind. This was inevitable. We knew it was coming. We knew it was going to happen. Put this under your tongue. Shut up and sit down. So I sit down. Five minutes later, I feel like a million bucks. I'm like, all right, great. I'm glad that's over. I'm going to go take a shower. She's like, no, you're not. And my son grabs me, throws me in the car. We run off to the hospital. It's like eight minutes away. And it was weird walking in going, hey, I, uh, this is strange, but I think I'm having a heart attack. Can you guys check me out a little bit? And um, she goes, sure. You know, and they confirmed it. Two in the morning, Sunday, 
you had a heart attack. So I'm sitting there, I'm calling everybody. I'm freaking out, right? And, um, but I was cool. I was relaxed. They had me on blood thinners. Everything was cool. Monday morning, the nurse comes in. And this is, gets a little personal, guys. So it's just, just my story, right? And uh, the nurse comes in. She goes, do you have any questions, Ms. Any questions, Mr. Rodriguez? I was like, no. She goes, well, the tech is going to be in, and she's going to prep you for the procedure. I was getting a catheter, and they were going to find what the block was, right? And I, I don't know if you knew, but they go in through your groin. And uh, I go, what do you mean prep you for the procedure? And she's like, you know, tighten things up a little bit. I'm like, can I do my own area? Is that a thing? Because uh, she's like, no, you're on blood thinners. And uh, she sheared me like a young lamb. It was, it was, it was a nightmare. And I was embarrassed because I was married almost 30 years and, at the time. And, and it was very cold in that room. It was so cold in that room, sir. You know what I'm talking about. And <laughs> I'm probably never going to come back. I'm not going to be invited back. So. so they wheeled me into the cath lab. And uh, I said, hey, how's everybody doing today? And as soon as I said, hello, splash. They hit me with a mop full of ice cold antiseptic at ground zero. And I'm like, wow, is there enough ice in that? That is, that's a little spicy. Is that supposed to sting? She's like, yeah, there's... You know, you're going to be okay. So I'm laying there. I'm trying to cool it off by, by blowing. Like, <laughs> but, but my breath was hitting my belly and shooting up this way. The lady's bangs are moving. I'm like, this is horrible. Anyway, make a long story short. They, they found one, one blockage at uh, 90%. And they put one stent in. But I'm fine. I'm fine now. So thank you. Thank you. I'll say this. You'd like to be short. Sure you know, politics and differences of religion and who other people are sleeping with. It just, you know, just be polite to everybody. I don't know. Is it, would you say that's, that's a fair thing? So, you know, change your perspective and try not to stress out because it can be gone like that tomorrow. So try to, I don't know what the, where this is going, but <laughs> this is the weirdest thing. I'm talking to you guys. Bunch of young people in here looking at me like 30 years of marriage. They have no idea what I'm talking about. They want to eat some pizza and play some Call of Duty or something. I don't know what's going on, but uh, I'm down for whatever, especially the pizza. Are, are, are we good with the judging or? Uh, okay, wow. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. Change your perspective. I'm Carlos Rodriguez. Enjoy the rest of the program. Have a great night. Thank you so much. Thank you, boss. Thank you, Carlos Rodriguez. We, man, we were just on pins and needles the whole time throughout that whole comedy routine. Let me tell you, that was great. Um, it, it's got to be tough to make a comedy routine like two generations below you, right? I mean, sometimes the humor, sometimes it hits, sometimes it doesn't. But um, no, I think everybody enjoyed it. Did you enjoy Carlos' act? Yeah, that was good. Good job, Carlos. Wonderful. Yeah, you know, as a university professor, we learned a lot from watching comedians. Let me tell you, we learn a lot how to handle an audience, how to wait for the laugh. Sometimes it comes, sometimes it never comes. Um, but it's, uh, it's hard work, and Carlos did a great job. It looks like we have some results from the judging panel. I'm going to hand it over here to uh, Chris Blake on behalf of the judging panel. We, just so you know, everybody watching, we've gotten tons of messages saying that the click to vote thing wasn't working. And apparently it wasn't, so we did a little workaround in an entrepreneurial way, and we posted in the chat, in the, the live stream, where you can write in who you want to vote for. So we have somebody hand tallying the votes right now, and we're going to do that workaround, and we're going to find out who got the most votes. We don't have the results yet. It feels like election night, and presidential election or something, but they're coming in. Let me tell you, they're coming in, and we're waiting for them to come in. We will have results, hopefully, by tonight. But we have some formal results right now, so I'm going to ask Chris to please come up here and uh, report on behalf of the judging panel, maybe introduce the judges, and uh, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So uh, it was definitely a tough deliberation. All the teams were great, and, uh, and we, had a, uh, we had a tough time out there. I think we arm wrestled a few times and finally came to uh, some conclusions. But I, I do want to thank uh, our judges. Uh, so we had uh, Rayma Henderson. She was one of our judges. Uh, Allison Swagler Webb from the Alabama Power Foundation, and also Mark Bernstein from the Alabama Power Foundation. So they were they were the judges along with myself, and uh, so 
Now, without any further ado, let's get the, uh, the teams announced. So we'll start with our third place team, and uh, they get a cash prize of $2,000 for their work, and uh, that goes to Iron City Experiences. <laughs> Would you guys like to say something about the win? Yeah, just uh, thank you uh, for everyone's votes and especially the judges. Uh, we had a, a blast working on this project and um, it was great how our team worked together. And uh, it, I think it, I can speak for the group that it changed all of our view about how we look at startups, how we look at how they can impact the, uh, the city. So it was a great experience. And thank you again for your, your deliberation and results. Harvester. Congratulations. Uh, I think I would like to thank, well, you, you're the team leader. So you're the team leader. <laughs> it's been an awesome ride. Thanks to my team. They've yeah. done an awesome job. I was just there to like help guide in a little bit, and they were creative. They were awesome. Uh, special shout out to Brian Layton, y'all did awesome. And then supporting roles, y'all did. It was an awesome experience. Thank you so much for letting us do this album of power. We really appreciate it so much. I uh, hope you appreciated our skit. Uh, we tried to get a little bit different than a traditional pitch. And uh, second place feels really awesome. So thank you. All right. <laughs> Great job. Yep. Now, I'll, I'll be honest, you guys can't see this at home. They were just happy to get some pizza, but okay, they'll take $1,000. All right, friends, big smiles. Ready, and one, two, and three. Last one. Great job, friends. All right, congratulations, friends. Great job. Congrats. Congrats. All right, Congrats. congratulations. Good job. <laughs> Great job. All righty. Well, we're to the top spot now. Top spot. <laughs> but before you announce the top winner, again, congratulations to everyone. Uh, I know how hard it is sometimes to work with a team. Um, and then when everyone has bright ideas and all of it means something, I'm really just talking just to just drag it out. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. They're looking at me like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Shut yeah, up. yeah. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> all right. So without further ado, the uh, number one uh, with a $5,000 prize goes to RE Form. <laughs> <laughs> RE Form, come up and get your top prize. Congratulations. All right, congratulations. Thank you so much. Um, we purely don't have any words. Um, I've been honored to work with these amazing group of individuals. We've had a lot of ideas come up, and everything that we formed just kind of integrated one and wanted together. Um, it wouldn't be possible with a lot of you here, especially Dr. Murphy, uh, with his guidance and support. My parents are in the back uh, supporting me from day one. And of course, the judges and my other teammates. Um, it's truly been an honor to work with you guys and get to know you guys on this level. So thank you so much. All right, congratulations. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> okay. 
Dr. Murphy took my microphone, but um, you can keep it. It's your event. Uh, Chris, thank you so much for all that you have done for this program. Thank you so much, Dr. Murphy, for allowing me to come and see. I mean, it's just exciting to know so many people from all around the world choose to become educated by people like you here in Birmingham and that they're going to go out and make the world a better place. That's right. And, you know, we have one more announcement to make, the People's Choice Award. Oh, that's right. Which they're madly tallying right now. So, everybody, uh, we don't know who it is yet. There's... Um, it's funny in the electronic age, and we're doing this by hand. Yeah, <laughs> we're counting the votes by hand. Not um, we hand counted. <laughs> there was an audit, and I'd like to congratulate Steel City Harvesters and Iron City Experiences. Oh, super cool. Congratulations. We want to thank everybody if you're still out there. I think I could hear the computers clicking off no, while no, we were no. up here talking. But um, we're, I'm going to hand it back to Eunice, our MC for this evening. And thank you. Thank you, Chris Blake, Alabama Power Foundation. If you want to take us out, Eunice, this has been a magical, wonderful evening in the Magic City. Thank you to all the students. You make us proud. We are very proud of you. You all did wonderful. Have a good night. Eunice Elliott, everybody. It, exactly, exactly what he said. Thank you so much, Dr. Murphy. Hey, young folks, please keep doing what you have been doing. You are our future. We're so excited about everything that you're going to bring to the table, not just to Birmingham, but to the world. Congratulations. Thank you so much again to the judges. Thank you to the sponsors. Thank you, Dr. Murphy, for having me. Thank you to Carlos for doing the comedy that I didn't do. And uh, you guys stay safe and good night. Hey.